request have a need from God? It doesn't matter what it is. God wants to fill that need. God wants to meet you where you're at. And I also want to open the altars to bring your tithe and your offerings to Him as a form of worship, not out of a form of, of, of a tradition or out of, out of some obligation, but out of, a, out of a, an obedience to the Word of God. It's hard sometimes. I know it's hard to be obedient when you look around and everything around you says, if you do this, you won't have enough. But God is our enough. God is, is the one that supplies our need. I want to open that altar up to you to be obedient to his word and what he's he's saying to you today as we finish this the worship out today just be encouraged to come
our head bowed, our eyes closed as we just remain in this atmosphere of prayer right now. There have been many, many needs brought to my attention this last week, this last weekend, and even this morning. I want us to just corporately, corporately agree that God is bigger than all of the needs we could possibly face, all the challenges. We have some in our body right now that are hurting. Financially, they're not sure where they're going to be tomorrow. We've got some that are moving. We've got uh, ministries that are moving. We've got folks that aren't even sure where their next meal is coming from. And this time of celebration, in this time of thanksgiving, in this time of giving, for some it's the hardest season of the year. I want to lift them up right now, can we church? Father, you know each and every need in our body. God, I'm reminded of a few families even within our CLC family God, that don't even know where they're going to, to get their next meal or if their rent will be paid the next month. But God, we know that you are more than able to meet each and every need. God, you know every need that are that your children may have. God, the, you said if, if you would care even for the little sparrow, God, how much more would you care for your children? So, Lord, we just put them in your hands right now, fully trusting that, God, for those who believe, for those who will follow hard after you, God, for those that will seek you first, Lord, all other things will come at your hand. Father, for those that are weak, Lord, I pray that you would make them strong. For those that are down, God, I pray that you would lift them up. We lift them up right now to your care. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, church. I'd like to ask our children to just step into the middle aisle if they would. We want to lift our kids up right now and bless them as they go to their classes. We've got lots of kids today. Church, will you just stretch your hands out to the middle aisle? Let's just pray for our kids right now. Father God, thank you for our children. They're so precious. Right now, we just put them in your care. God, I pray for the teachers, for the junior high, for the elementary. God, I pray that you would just anoint them. Lord, let them speak your words, Father. Let every child that, that uh, goes into their classes, God, come out changed by you. In Jesus' name, Father, touch their hearts today. In Jesus' name, we'll give you glory and honor. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, church. God bless you, kids. You are dismissed to your classes. Let's give our kids a hand as they go to their classes. Oh, come on, let's give them a bigger hand than that. We love our kids. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Great presence of God today. I want to remind you, as our kids are going to their classes, that starting next week, our kids will need to check in as they get off the elevator. So when you come off the elevator, you're going to see a check-in station in the lobby with our kids' directors, and they will have a little computer that will check your child in. And once they've checked you in, you will get a number that is specific to your child. So that way, if there's any little needs that uh, we need to, to address the parents with, uh, you might see your number flash across the screen. Uh, and that way you'll know that we need some help with your child or your child might need your assistance. All right. But we also want to just make sure that our kids are always safe. So when you check them out, you'll need to have the same number that you were given when you check them in so that uh, strangers can't just come in and uh, grab your kids. So we just want to make sure that they're safe. OK, so next Sunday we start our check in process right as you get off the elevator. You'll want to see our uh, whoever's at the registration desk for our kids. Also, just really quickly, a couple of reminders. Uh, the men, we're going to have a state basketball 
uh, gathering this Saturday. We are not going to have it this Saturday. There were some conflicts in, in schedules when you're dealing with all the churches in the state. Sometimes it's tough to get them all together. And uh, so with the conflict in schedules, uh, we're going to have to postpone that. Uh, Brother Lance is going to give you more details about that as he gets that rescheduled. But it is in your bulletin for this Saturday. We will not have that this Saturday. However, there is something this Saturday, and that's our women's Christmas party. So for those of you uh, women out there at CLC, this is always a great time of fellowship for our ladies. And it will be at our home. Uh, Christy is is excited to have all the ladies in our home and she's been decorating and getting things ready and so this saturday at six o'clock if you're a female at coc and you want to bring a friend that's fine too if they're a female all right uh, so so come on out this saturday six o'clock you can see my wife for more information and directions you need to know how to get there all right uh this tuesday same as always we've got youth uh, we're going to be closing out the mini movie series uh, on Monumental, uh, so that is going to happen this Sunday or this Tuesday. Doors open at six o'clock, so make sure that you're here for that. Okay, all right. Uh, and I think I was given one more uh, one more announcement right uh, before church started. That uh, if any of you are looking to celebrate Christmas and you have a, a tree or you you would like a tree, if you don't if you can't afford a tree, I know that there is an organization that's giving out free trees. So that you can have a tree to celebrate Jesus Christ, amen, and, and all that he's done for us and the birth of our Savior. And uh, I don't exactly remember which place that is, but you can see my wife, Christy, she can tell you. Uh, or Carol Ann, I believe Carol Ann has uh, shared that news with, right? Everybody go see Carol Ann after service. She'll love that, okay? Uh, just bombard her with questions. She'll be glad to help you, okay? All right. Uh, it's good to have everybody here today. We're finishing our series called Broken Heart Surgery. Oh, and by the way, next week is uh, Worship Unleashed. That's always a great service. Uh, it's all kinds of worship, and uh, we're going to be uh, bathing in the presence of God next Sunday, so you don't want to miss that. Uh, all right, so today we're going to close out our series called Broken Heart Surgery. How many of you have been in every service so far in this series? All right, so y'all should have really good beating hearts that are ready to rock, right? Uh, you're strong. You're, you're revived and you've got new hearts. Uh, so we want to continue and conclude this series with this last message called A New Heart, Living with a New Heart. Some of us are going to need a new heart after this Thanksgiving weekend for all that stuff we ate, right? Uh, I'm telling you what, uh, it is just, did you enjoy your, your Thanksgiving celebrations? We were blessed to be with family and uh, it's always uh, nice to, to, to watch football, right? To watch football, to get good food, and to be around family. Some of you didn't enjoy the football game, I take it, uh, but I sure did. So, go Hawks, come on baby, yeah. So, I know, I know, I know. So, let's get on with the message today, because some of y'all need a new heart, all right? I know your hearts were broken on Thursday, and we need to get you a new heart. But we started this series with part one in pre-op. You know, before you go into any kind of heart surgery, there's always a pre-op that you have to go through. There's things you need to do before the surgery to make sure that you get ready for surgery, right? So you want to make sure that you do those things. We talked about identifying one or two people that are going to be there with you through the process. They're going to be there with your journey, through your journey with you, holding your hand, being that form of encouragement. You got to do that before you go into surgery. We talked about meditating on God's word. Remember, we, we talked about the, the actual tips that actual surgeons who do actual heart surgery were giving us, and they said you need to meditate, meditate, meditate. You remember that? So we talked about meditating on God's word. We talked about keeping God in the number one position. Keeping God in the number one position. If you have God in the number one position, you're going to be all right. Because some of our biggest disappointments, some of our biggest heartbreak was when our number one friend turned on us, stabbed you in the back, or maybe hurt your feelings of some, some sort, somehow. Uh, that's some of the hardest things. Why? Because your number one friend, the one you thought would never do that, did that. Well, guess what? If Jesus Christ is in that number one position, you don't have to fear that any longer. God's got your back. Also, we talked about preparing for the hard stuff by casting your burdens upon the Lord. This is all pre-op stuff. 
We need to make sure we lay our burdens before the Lord because it's not going to get easy when you're going through heart surgery. All right? And obviously, we need that positive support system. You're here today, so I'm preaching to the choir. But church is one of those positive support systems. When you need a hug, when you need some prayer, when you need some encouragement, your church family is there to give you that. The second part was during the actual surgery. Remember that? We still needed to talk about what did the surgeon say? Okay, now you're going into surgery, you're going under the knife. What did the doctor say? Well, first of all, the doctor is going to give you anesthesia. I don't know anybody who goes into open heart surgery without first being administered anesthesia. Well, we talked about God having some anesthesia for us too, and we don't want to refuse God's anesthesia. We need to allow him to cut through that protective barrier and trust him to keep us safe. When you go into heart surgery, you know, they got to cut open that breastplate. They've got to expose everything underneath because that's where your heart is. That breastplate is there to protect your heart because without it, you get one punch into the, into the chest without a breastplate, you could do some serious damage to the heart and die, right? So that pre breastplate, <coughs> excuse me, is there to protect you. But when you go into open heart surgery, the surgeon has to cut that open and pull that open. Now everything is exposed. How many of you know it's not always fun when everything's exposed? <clears throat> that's, not the, that's not what we enjoy most in life. Hey, let me just go ahead and open this up and expose all my inner darkest secrets. Everything in my heart I want you to just see. But that's what the surgeon has to do in order to repair, repair it. Well, that's what our God has to do too. We're going under the knife and he has to open your chest up expose everything in your heart so that now he can repair it. When you go under the knife, the surgeon is going to reroute some things. He's going to take some, some arteries, he's going to repair some ventricles or, uh, and move things around and maybe reroute it so that your heart works properly. And when you're under the knife, God does the same thing. He reroutes some things. All of those pre-wired emotions in your brain connected to your heart, connected to your emotions, connected to your spirit. When we're angry, there's a route that your mind takes. These emotions, everything that's stirred up, it is, it is wired to go a certain way in your brain, and God has to rewire that. It's connected to your heart. He has to rewire that. And what we have to remember is after we go under the knife, we don't want to go back to the old route. Okay, We've got to Stop trying to live through the blockage in the arteries in the heart and just let and live through the, the new arteries, the new route that God has created when we went under the knife. Then he sews you back up, just like the surgeon does. He sews you back up. He puts your breastplate back together and he ties everything up and it heals that way. The great news is, is that when God closes us back, closes us back up, now, our breastplate, everything about us is now protecting the words he did. <coughs> the breastplate isn't trying to protect that, that burdened heart, that diseased heart. The breastplate no longer is protecting that heart that had been broken. It's protecting a brand new heart. When the surgeon ties everything up and closes up the chest cavity of those who have gone under heart surgery. He does not do that to protect the old heart that was diseased. He does that to protect the new heart, the repaired heart. Amen? And then finally, two weeks ago, we went through recovery. And in recovery, we got to keep everything clean. Remember, a recent wound is easily infected. You don't want to get all sewn up and tied up and then go out and roll in the mud. Right? You gotta keep that thing clean. What's the first thing the surgeon does when before he go, operates? He takes that stuff and disinfects everything, right? Because he needs to make sure everything's clean. And when he ties it up and sews it up, he makes sure everything is clean. The worst thing we can do is go out and get it all dirty again. We gotta keep that clean. In recovery, we gotta keep everything clean. You gotta wash it, you gotta do all of that. And in recovery, we gotta make sure we rest in him. Because when you're in recovery, you gotta rest. You gotta rest. You can't just get out of surgery and go play uh, four 
four quarters of football. Can't do it. You got to relax. You got to rest in Him. And then you got to take your daily temperature. Remember, we talked about taking your temperature spiritually like twice a day. That's what the surgeons were saying. Listen, right after your surgery, I want you to go home, but I want you to take your temperature daily for the next several days. Why is that? You just got to keep tabs on things. And when we have just had God do a full-on replacement of our heart, we had a broken heart. Maybe you fell in love with your Spanish teacher, and then you found out she was married. <laughs> right? Your heart is broken. When God heals that heart, Every once in a while, you got to take your own spiritual temperature to make sure you're staying on track. At Connection Life Church, we like to connect upward, and then we like to connect inward. When we do that, we can take our temperature and know we're going to be okay. We're going to be all right. Why? Because we did our daily devotions today. We got on our, on our knees and we prayed today. We worshiped the Lord today. And we've got to take that spiritual temperature every single day, sometimes twice a day. Some of us need to take our spiritual temperature as soon as we wake up. For us grumpy folks who aren't morning people, you got to take our spiritual temperature. Let me tell you another good time to take your spiritual temperature right after you've been repaired by God. You get off of work. You get home. You maybe just sat through traffic for an hour, like my brother-in-law does every single day, driving from Portland and others, sometimes two hours. We went to... Portland not too long ago just to pick somebody up or do something. I can't remember. We were there for just a second. Then we turned right around and came back. It took us an hour to get there. It took us two hours to get home. Two hours to go about 49 miles. That's crazy, right? And you get home, the last thing you want is anybody to get in your, in your space and, and irritate you with anything and Sometimes, as soon as you walk through that door, you better take your temperature real quick. You need to know if you're on track. You need to know if something's not right inside. That way you can fix it, and then you can have a productive and good night with your spouse, with your family, with whoever you're with, right? Because when you don't do that, sometimes, how many of you know it can blow up on you? We need to check yourself before you wreck yourself, right? My dad used to always say, you got to do a checkup from the neck up. Sometimes you got to take your temperature. All right? Today we're going to continue and finish off with the new heart that God has given us. Some of us went through pre-op. We went under the knife. And some of you over the last two weeks have been in recovery. Now, how do we live with this new heart? Because when you've got the new heart, guess what? You're no longer subject to the wounded heart. Because your, your new heart has never been wounded. See? When God gives you something new, it's new. If you've got a new heart, you don't have to worry about that, that brokenness before. Because you've got a new heart. The heart you're living with now has never been broken. If you feel like you're struggling still with that brokenness, it's because you haven't lived with the new heart. You're still living with the old heart. God said, don't do that. Don't do that. Amen. Would you stand with me for the reading of God's word as we go into the last part of this series? I'm going to be in Ezekiel chapter 36. We just want to honor God by honoring his word. For in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So Ephesians, or Ezekiel, I'm sorry, Ezekiel chapter 36. I'm going to start in verse 26. I'll give you a second to turn there. If you haven't yet, you can download the Life app, the Life Bible app, the Life Study Bible app, and uh, you can follow Connection Life Church. And when you do, scriptures will be on the on the board, but it'll also pop up on your tablet or your or your phone, and you can just push a button and it'll pop up right there for you. So you might look into that. Ezekiel chapter thirty-six, verse twenty-six says. I will give you a new heart. Everybody say new. new. And put a new spirit within you. Everybody say new. new. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you because you walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. You shall be my people and I 
will be your God. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, that you are our Father. And you do care, and you do make us new. So, Lord, right now I pray that you would open our minds to your word today. And, God, that we would live with a new heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. In our text today, there are a lot of ifs, thens. I don't know if you remember back when computers were just being invented, just being created. Some of y'all might remember that. When I was in school, we took computer classes, but they were very, very different because computers were brand new. And uh, they were big, giant things. And there wasn't a lot of complicated software. Uh, right now, we're redoing our our church website because they, they did some updates and, and it kind of messed up a lot of our coding that it's more work to try to fix than just start over. So we might get a brand new, fresh look for our website. And I'm going through support and, and trying to get all this coding done. And, and man, it's just tough. And, and I just finally told the guy from, uh, from the web service that we use that, you know what, I think we just need to kind of start fresh and start over. And they agreed that that might be the best. But So I started a new project for our church website. And some of the coding just isn't quite right. But back then, coding wasn't the same. It was, it was if-then statements. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, they taught us how to code computers. And, um, and you used line numbers. So line 10, this, 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 this. Line 20, if line 10 said this, then do this. Line 30, if line 20 said this, then the, there's a lot of if-thens. But if you got the if-thens correct, then it worked. And I believe I was in eighth grade, maybe, ninth grade, I can't remember. It was a while ago, let me just tell you that. And I was assigned the task to create a program, a game, with computers. We didn't have any cool software. We just had to line 10 it, line 20 it. If you forgot something, then you could add line 15. You know, if you forgot something, you could add line 13. And I wrote this program, and it was the very first. It was before, it was before uh, eHarmony. It was before uh, Farmers of America, or whatever that is. It was before all of those websites. I wrote a program to find your perfect mate. <laughs> I did. There was a lot of if-then statements. A lot of if-then. If you like this, then this. If you like that, then that. You know. And if you didn't like any of it, then sorry, game over. <laughs> you know, <laughs> whatever. Uh, but that was my very first program that I wrote with uh, HTML coding or whatever it was back then. It was actually just DOS coding. And uh, there's a lot of if-then statements. And in our text, there's a lot of if-then statements. He's going to give us a new heart. And he will take out the heart of stone. He will give you a heart of flesh. That means your, your heart will be able to be responsive. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you have the code. It says in verse 28, Then, everybody say then. Amen. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave your fathers. Then you shall be my people, and I will be your God. It's funny how we want this new heart, this new life. But we don't want to follow all of the code that goes before it. We want the blessings. We want the, the purity. We want the righteousness. We want forgiveness and grace. But we're forgetting some of the code before it. That is, we have to live by his statutes. We got to understand his grace and live with this new heart he's placed in us. Through the entire series, I've given you tips given to us by actual doctors, actual surgeons who performed actual heart surgeries. And today is no different. I'm going to give you some tips that they gave us. And this is from a company 
called Medtronic. Anybody heard of it? Medtronic? If you, it's funny because those, the, the largest companies in the world are some of the ones you've never even heard of, but you use them all the time. You know what I mean? Now, maybe some of us haven't used Medtronic, but it is the world's largest medical technology company. I think it's worth somewhere in the realm of $17 billion. They offer an unprecedented breadth and depth of innovative therapies to alleviate pain, restore health, and extend life after your surgery. Last year, more than 10 million people benefited from their medical therapies and treatments. 10 million, okay? And here's what the doctors at Medtronic have to say. And remember, we're talking about broken heart surgery. Here's what the medical doctors have to say. First, they said this. After surgery, you'll likely begin to feel better almost right away, but your condition will improve gradually, and you'll notice that each day you'll feel just a little bit better. That's what the doctor said. That you'll feel better almost right away, but it's a gradual healing. Your condition will gradually improve. I want to read to you out of Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8 verse 22 says this. It's a story about a blind man. You might remember this story. Verse 22 says, Then he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Now, folks, I'm not going to spit on your eyes and put my hands over you if you think I'm going to. I'm not. But for some reason, this is what Jesus did. And the first time he did it, the man still saw men walking and they looked like trees. Now, you might ask yourself, well, why did he have to do it again? Because then the next time he did it, he became healed. Why did he have to do it again? Maybe in this case, the Lord was showing him that sometimes your healing is gradual and not instantaneous. Maybe sometimes we got to remember that just because you haven't received all that you asked for right in this moment doesn't mean God isn't already working in you. See, God was working in the blind man the very moment he spoke over him and laid his hands on him. Now, the blind man didn't get everything he wanted right away. But Jesus, being the gracious God that he is, touched him once again, and then he received his healing. What does that have to do with what the doctor said? Well, remember, the doctor said that you might feel a little better right away, but it's a continual, gradual process where your condition will continually, gradually get better. we got to live in that. The doctors know that's how it works. Jesus knew that's how it works. I look at it a, differently, a little bit differently, too. Think about this. Can God heal you immediately? Absolutely. He can do whatever he wants. He's God, right? But have you ever known someone that received a mighty blessing from God, and then shortly thereafter, you notice that they kind of strayed away? Why is that? God blesses us, and then we go on our merry way, as if we don't need God now. I look at it like this. Sometimes we need to remember, just as the doc said that it's gradual, we need to remember that we need to continually be dependent on Him. Just because you got a new heart doesn't mean you're Superman all of a sudden. You can do anything on your own without Him. doesn't work that way. we got to remember we always are dependent on Him. We always, just like the blind man, what, could he see people? Yes, he could. Now they look like trees. He says, yeah, but just continue to be dependent on me. Let me touch you again and see what happens. Boom, now you can see. We've got to continually be dependent on him always. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says it like this. 
And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Do you see the code in there? There's code in there. Line 10 says, let us not grow weary while doing good. Line 20, in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. If we do not lose heart, then we have a line 30 and a line 40, which is pretty promising. But we've got to remember to not lose heart. Have you ever done something just good for a long time and then just felt like, why am I even doing this? We get weary of doing good. You know, I think of Laura, she just shared with me that the, the ministry house that she has in Salem is moving to uh, Staten. Is that what you said? Oh, your family is moving. I got you. I got you. And when you move to a different place, it's, it's different. You new environments, right? You got all this stuff going on. But I was, as I was talking to Laura, I was asking her about how Thanksgiving went because the ministry, they provide basically family and, and atmosphere and shelter for a lot of women who just doesn't, they don't have it. Right? They just don't have it. She's been doing that for a long time. And I'll bet you if you ask her, sometimes it gets a little wearisome. If you ask any pastor, they tell you the truth is, sometimes we get tired. Sometimes it's tough. Sometimes you can grow weary. But the if-then statement is, if you do not lose heart, and you stay focused on the calling that I've placed on your life, if you continue to do good and not grow weary in doing good, then you will reap. You will reap the benefits that the Lord has for you. In due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So the next time you're doing good and that person you're doing good for gets on your last nerve, <laughs> you ever been there? I mean, you pour into their life, you invest in them, you give them this, you give them that, and they irritate you to no end. Just don't grow weary. You stay on that path. You continue to serve because you know that's what God wants you to do. And in due time, you'll reap the benefits of that. The second thing the doctors said from Medtronic, they said after surgery, you'll have to make some lifestyle adjustments to get the most out of your new heart. You have to make some adjustments to get the most out of your new heart. Last night, as we were cleaning up after dinner, my wife was washing out the coffee pot. And she looks at me with the coffee pot in hand. It's one of those single cup server things. So it's got the coffee pot that does all the brewing. You put all the water in, and then you just push a button, and it'll fill one cup. And then you push another, or you push the button again, and fill another cup. But it's just, you know, just, I don't know what I'm trying to tell you. It's a coffee pot. And uh, as she's washing out the coffee pot that holds the pot part, the brewing part is what I'm trying to say. It's not a carafe. It's not a, a glass thing. It's, I still don't know what I'm trying to say, but it's internal, okay? You put the water in it, and then it brews it, okay? She's taking that out, and she's washing it. She looks at me. She says, how long have we had this coffee pot? I go, I don't know. It's been a few years now. It's been a little while. We like it because... Yeah, you make it really fast. You put your cup under there and it just drips right into your cup and you're good to go. We like it. It's been, it's been in our house for a few years and I'm not sure what we'd do without it. <laughs> she looks at me and says, yeah, I just noticed something on the back. I'm like, what is it? She goes, there's instructions on the back. For what? There's instructions on how to make iced coffee with this coffee maker. I said, What? That's weird because Cameron's been making iced coffee. He takes the coffee that's left, he puts ice in his cup, he puts it on it, he makes iced coffee. But this coffee maker has instructions on the back to put ice in it instead of water, tells you how to brew it differently so that you can make, effectively, iced coffee. We never knew that. <laughs> We've been making coffee with this pot for years, never knew that. We weren't getting the most out of our coffee pot because we didn't 
look at all the instructions. We didn't notice all the labels, all the directions, and we weren't getting the most out of this coffee pot. Seems easy enough, just put ice in a cup and put it in there. But then it's hot and it melts all your ice and you no longer have iced coffee. You gotta get the most out of life. You gotta get the most out of your coffee pot. You gotta get the most out of your new heart. But you gotta read the instructions. There's if-then statements. There's the word of God that you need to meditate, meditate, meditate on. In Ephesians chapter four, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21. It says, If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man. Everybody say new. new. The new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Let me put something in a perspective for you. The doctor sews you up. He just put a new heart in you. This new heart came from somewhere. There are, not that I'm aware of, I don't think there's medically robotic hearts. They're either transplants, right? So they're either putting new pieces to your heart or something like that. But when God gives you a new heart, it's completely new. It is completely new. And we have to live as if we have a new heart. God put on, or, or it says in, the, in verse 24, you put on the new man which was created according to God. In true righteousness and holiness, we have a new heart. I remember at camp years and years ago, the camp speaker that I brought up, he had an old man mask. And let me tell you something. You've got to put on the new man because the old man is scary. He puts on the old man mask at this youth camp one year. After lights out, everybody's in bed. Everything's supposed to be calming down, settling down. At this time, we probably had close to 300 people at our youth camp. We had cabins all over the place. Staffers trying to calm everybody down, get lights out. And our camp speaker decides to put on the old man mask. Now, I can't even describe to you what the old man mask looks like, but it's scary. He goes through the camp middle of the night, it's very dark. With a flashlight in hand, he goes into the cabins. He's got the old man mask on. He peeks in. Oh, and our, oh, and our guest worship team, too, was the accomplices. And they were like some kind of hip generational, I don't know where they come from, Australia or Canada. 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 They come in, that's a little far from Australia, from Canada. Yeah, anyway. Them, so the worship team, the guest worship team from Canada, our guest speaker, old man mask, and a flashlight in the dark. You can only imagine the screams we heard when they walk into the cabins and go, Aah! with a flashlight on the old man face. I think everybody thought that the camp just died and went to hell. Which is really ironic since we just had a great service that night. They were so scared. They're screaming. People are throwing things at him. And when that cabin was done, he went to the next cabin. And then the next cabin. And then the next cabin. Freaking everybody out. Why? Because the old man is scary. We've got to put on a new man which isn't quite as scary. Why? Because the new man has the right flesh the right tone, the right look, and God has created the new man according to his righteousness. When you live according to the new man and not the old, things start to change. Things aren't quite as scary. 
things quite aren't as hard to deal with. We've got to put on the new man. How many of you know that when you put on some fresh shoes, like you just bought them, or maybe some new outfit on, don't you just feel better? You feel better. My daughter just got the Black Friday shopping. I don't understand the whole Black Friday shopping thing, but they went and Nana bought them clothes, and they had their own money, which I never knew they had. They're like always asking me for money. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> they've got lots of money. Like, where'd that come from, right? So my youngest daughter comes in. She's all decked out with a brand new outfit like what is it christmas birthday it's all coming up today's not those days i had my own money like what they're showing off their new shoes and you just feel better when you got the new on unless you're my son cameron he feels better when he's got old he's like oh dad you don't buy those boots goodwill <laughs> and we went into a macy's brand new boots look cheap and oh dad no serious go at goodwill okay so whatever but if you're my girls you feel better when you got the new on right you got the new on and god says put on the new man renewed by him renewed according to his righteousness he does it he makes it new you know, if I was making a new, no big deal. I, I understand why you'd want to go somewhere else because I'm not that handy. I can't really make a lot of things new and make it all great. I've tried that before and things break, <laughs> right? It's like, oh, use this. It's great. It's fantastic. No, I did all this. And then, you know, it lasts for two seconds and then it breaks. But if you let God make you new, it lasts a lifetime. It really does. It lasts a lifetime unless you decide to go back to the old. But he wants us to put on the new. God wants us to put on the new man according to his glory, his righteousness. It'll last us a lifetime. Then the third and final thing that I got from the doctors at Medtronic. They said this, after surgery, there are precautions you should take to make sure your heart disease does not return. See, when you have a new item, you want to take care of it. You got to take proper precautions. I remember, you know, you know what it's like when you when you get a new car. Now, I've never got a brand new car right off the lot. Never have. Number one is I could never afford that. Number two is I don't I don't like the how how you know it's not worth as much. Like the moment you drive off the lot. Actually, you don't even have to drive off the lot. All you have to do is sign that paper, and you just lost $5,000, right? Immediately. You can blue book it. You blue book it before you go in, and it looks like great. You sign the paper, then blue book it, it just went down ten grand. It's like, what happened, right? But when you do have a new car to you, whether it's brand new off the lot or right from Craigslist, okay, whatever. When you have a new car, I remember when we, we bought a newer car to us, okay? And it was my dream car. I loved this car. It was silver. It had 20-inch chrome wheels with low-profile tires, right? It was a beautiful car. I loved it. I mean, we turned heads with that car. Not intentionally, but it was cool driving, right? <laughs> and when we first got that car, you know what the rules are? No food. No drinks in that car. No nothing. No nothing. Take off your shoes before you get in the car. Right? Because it's new. We're going to treat it like it's new. And we're going to not eat. And by the way, no bumper stickers. No stickers. I mean, in our house, you'd be lucky if there was a Are You Connected sticker in the window. Because we just don't do that on our cars, okay? Now, of course, there would be an Are You Connected sticker, except that we're out right now. we got to reorder some. <laughs> but no bumper stickers, nothing on the windows, nothing in the... Don't even think about coming home from soccer in that car unless you completely remove all of your clothing. Put it in a big black plastic bag, stick it in the trunk, right? 
There's no way. We treat our new cars like new cars. I know that some of you in the last year have got new cars or newer cars to you, whatever. And I know how you probably treat them pretty nice. It's good to see my father-in-law and my mother-in-law here. They've just recently moved to Salem, Oregon, so you're going to be seeing a lot more of them. So it's good to have them. Welcome, you guys. Welcome, you guys. Nicole, good to see you back, too. Nice to see you as well. Just thought I'd throw that out there real quick. But I, I, as I was looking at my father-in-law, my father-in-law is kind of a car guy. Uh, he used to have this old Maverick, like, what was it, a 79 or 70, 67, 62 Maverick, 62 Maverick. Now, I don't know if you know what a Maverick is. It's a pretty cool car, though. Back then, I mean, I, if you still had a 62 Maverick all souped up and cleaned up, yeah, that's, that's a really cool car. And then we bought a Corvette from him. And the Corvette was really fun. And so he's a car guy. And I know that when you get something new like that, a car, you don't want to mess it up. We need to treat our heart like that. God just gave you something new. God just gave you something new. The Bible says he gave it to you according to his glory, his righteousness. He crafted it. He's the one who made it. Is it not worthy of the same treatment? Let's not mess it up. Let's not get it dirty. Let's not put a bunch of junk in it. He created it for us. And we need to live life just like that. No dirty food, junk, dirty feet all over our brand new heart. We gotta understand that it's just like a new car. We gotta treat it right. You know that your car, and, and I don't know if this has been scientifically proven, I know in my house that if we go through the wash, we take our, our car through the car wash, every time, when you come out of that car wash and it's all clean, you dry off and it's all shiny, guess what? It runs better. <laughs> I'm not joking. My car runs better when it's clean. I don't know if your car's like that, but mine is. And I also know this that when I let God put on the new me, and I live with the new me, and I get up and I freshen up and I take a shower and I get all cleaned up, I do my hair. <laughs> I get all nice, put the odor on, I get my clean clothes on, put my clean shoes on, and I get up and I, oh, I just run better. I run better. It's when you give up so you don't wash the car anymore. You don't care what's on it because how many of you have the new car, and then you have the old car? And if I was to ride in your old car, how many of you know, just like our old car, you'd have to push aside the McDonald's cups and then the French fries, and, and of course you've got the chicken nuggets underneath the seat with a half-eaten barbecue sauce, you know? Listen, that would have never happened in the Mercedes. Never. But why can we just let it go in the old? Because it's old. We don't care as much. Can I tell you something? When God does surgery on your broken heart, he's not recycling you. He's not putting you through a recycle bin. He's not refurbishing you. Okay? Because a lot of times when you buy things on on Amazon or somewhere else, you know, you think you're getting new, but you gotta look closely because it might say refurbished, which means they took somebody else's, refurbished it, and then sold it to you. But when God makes you new, he doesn't refurbish you. He makes you net new. Meaning, he creates you from nothing to amazing. <laughs> right, Randy? Oh, yeah. See, Randy wasn't always that new. <laughs> but when Pastor Randy was made new, he was amazing. That's why we keep him around. Because one day God made him that new. He made each and every one of us that new. 
Why do we try to live with the old? We've got to live with the new. The new heart. The new life. Everybody say new. new. So we need to take some proper precautions. Let me close with this. The doctor said there are precautions you should take to make sure your heart disease does not return. And this is what the doctor said. After your surgery, make sure to visit your doctor for follow-up care. We need follow-up care, right? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Hebrews 10, 25 says it like this. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Sometimes we've got to go to the Lord for follow-up care. Remember, we need to take our temperature twice a day, right? Our spiritual temperature. And sometimes we just need to go to Him for follow-up care. God, I know you may be new, but this is a gradual healing. God, I already feel better because I went to you and you came to me. But I still need some care. God, here's what I'm dealing with. Here's what I'm still struggling with. God, what do you prescribe today? Then tomorrow, you wake up, you take a shower, you put on fresh clothes, and you go to him. You go to the doctor again for follow-up care. You say, God... Here I am today. I come to you humbly and I lay everything down at your feet. God, what do you prescribe to me today? He gives you that prescription and you live with that. Then the next day, God, I'm here for my follow-up appointment with you. What do you prescribe for me today? And you know what he's going to say one day? He's going to say, well, actually, today's Wednesday. Pastor Kevin and I have been talking, and I want to prescribe to you, you must go connect with two people today, because it's Wednesday. God, I know this is about me. Because, no, I know it's about you. I'm prescribing to you to connect with somebody. You go share my love with somebody. You go share my joy with somebody. You go share my grace with somebody. If you do that, I'm telling you, that's going to get you through the next day. That's his prescription for you. You say, well, I can't do that. You don't understand. I've done that forever. And people still stab me in the back. I say, oh, oh, my son, my daughter, you're trying to live with that old heart, aren't you? Remember? We've already dealt with that. You've got a brand new heart. So don't live with the old heart. I wish that God was... In, was, was Solid, or not solid. That's not even what I was trying to say, Michelle. I wish that God was 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 uh, direct enough that when He gives you a new heart, He completely obliterates our memory, so we have no recollection of the old heart. But the thing is, is that God is still a God that allows us to make our own choices. He says, "You want that heart here? Let me go ahead and do that for you." But then it's your choice to live with the conditions of this new heart. It's your choice. So we need to live by that choice. I don't know what you've been going through. I don't know what you've gone through in the last four to five weeks. Maybe the last four to five years. Maybe throughout your entire lifetime you've struggled with a heart that has been broken. Or a heart that has been diseased. But I can tell you this, that everything we preach for the last four to five weeks is not make-believe. It's not fairy tale. The Word of God is the Word of God. If you believe in the Word of God, then it will change your life. If you live by the Word of God, it will change your life. You know, if we have a, uh, an annual business meeting here at Connection Life Church in two weeks from today. Okay? 
In this annual business meeting, we go over some of the business of the church, let you guys in on some of the behind the scenes stuff we have to make decisions on. On, on occasion, we have to take some things to the, to the church and vote on it, all right? And how do you become a member of the church? Well, there's a few things that you'll see in your bulletin that you have to do. But the main requirement is that you've given your heart to God and, and you've declared that this is the word of God, that it is true, and that to the best of your ability, you will live by the standards outlined in the word of God. That's pretty much the main requirement of being a member here. You have to believe in this word and to the best of your ability, live by this word. Then you can be a member. We've got to live by this word. You want to you want to live that new life? You got to live by this word. You want to live in the new conditions that God has outlined by his grace and by his righteousness? You got to live by this word. You want to live a life that is less challenging, less heartbreaking? You got to live by this word. You put him as the number one position, you don't get your heart broken as much. Why? Because he's always there. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He knows you from the time you were even born. He's known you. But we have to live by the Word of God. So whatever you've struggled with, whatever you've dealt with all your life, maybe you've dealt with it all your life, I'm here to tell you that today is the day that you can decide to wash the car, to keep it clean, to go back for regular checkups to the doctor. Who's the doctor? He's our doctor. He's our physician. He's our, our master physician. If we go back to him regularly for follow-ups, guess what? You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. The worst thing we can do is never go back to him. That's the worst thing we can do. After your surgery, you go live your life how you want. You never go back to the doctor. Guess what? You'll be dead within a year. You've got to go back to him for follow-up. Amen? Would you stand with me this morning? As we go out with this worship, I want to encourage you today to live life with your new heart not with your old heart. I know it's hard. It's hard. But you need to not live by the old heart. You need to live by the new heart. Get the most out of your new heart. Go to the physician. I wonder if you wouldn't pray with me with your eyes closed, your heads bowed. If you're here today and Maybe you haven't embraced the new heart that God has given you time and time again. Maybe you've struggled and you've continually gone back to your old ways, your old heart, your old hurts. Maybe you need the strength of God to live with the new heart that he's placed in you. If you're here today, you just need that encouragement and that prayer. I want to agree with you today. Would you just simply raise your hand in the air and you can put it right back down just so I can see it. I see your hand. Thank you. I see your hand. Thank you. Anybody else? I see your hands. Yes. The back. Anybody else? Say, I just want the strength of God to live with my new heart. It's not easy, church. It's not easy. I want to pray with you today. Father God, it's not easy to live 100% dependent on you, but God, I know we must. So Father, for those that have raised their hands saying, God, I need that new heart, but Lord, I need strength to not live with the old, I pray that you would give them the strength they need today. Father, knowing just about everybody in this room, I know that their desire is to live the way you've created them to live. So God, whatever they're struggling with, or whatever their hurts are, whatever their past may be, God, I pray that you would show them their new future. And God, that we would not rush out and get our new car dirty. Lord, that we would protect it, keep it clean, Father. 
And Lord, that we would daily go back to you. Lord, be our God. Be our strength. Be our light. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
thank you, Lord, for your word, which encourages us and reminds us, Lord, that we no longer live in the old flesh, but we live in the new by the power of the Son of God. We just pray that you go with us this week, that you anoint us, Lord, that you meet our needs, and that you help us to meet the needs of others around us and to love on those around us. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings and your mercy. In your name we all pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great week.